Christmas, one and all. <laughs> so this is the first video of our uh, three or four video um, series leading up to Christmas. So it's a kind of special. So it's a bit different than the serial killers that we've been doing. We're doing about like murder mysteries and just mysteries in general. Just so, legends really as yeah. well aren't they? And legends as well and things like that around them just to mix up the channel a little bit. So yeah, so this one is about who put Bella in the witch owl and this is a really popular um, story and um, the internet went crazy for it. So it's 1943, April the 18th and four teenagers, all boys, were walking through a wood called Hagley Wood and this was near Birmingham in England. <laughs> so World War II was raging across Europe obviously at this point so due to rationing uh, the, these four teenagers, Bob Farmer, Robert Hart, Fred Payne and Thomas Willits mm -hmm. decided to go looking for birds nests to try and get some eggs that they could bring back to their homes. Yeah, so they wanted to um, bring them back because of rationing and they were all hungry and starving basically. So one of the boys actually went off his off on his own uh, to look at the old stump of an old witch elm tree and when he looked through the branches he thought he saw like some eggs in a nest so he thought oh I'll, I'll just grab those and it turns out it was a human skull so he grabbed a long stick and like hooked it and pulled it out and the boys had a look at it and they were like oh god so they were a bit creeped out as you would be to find human remains in a witch elm tree wouldn't you really yeah. but um that boy um then put the school back after being really frightened and they quickly walked off and said to each other that they'd never speak of it again and they just wouldn't talk about it anymore. Despite what the boys agreed with each other, one of them did actually go and tell his father what had happened and the father called the police. Uh, which boy it was that told his father, it's not exactly confirmed, but we believe that it was Thomas Willits because he did lead the police back to the witch elm the next day. Yeah to check out and see if there was any more remains like knocking about around there. So they found a tree that was roughly five, six feet tall and the, there was an opening that was like tapered down and it was sort of like getting smaller as it reached the ground. Yeah. So the authorities gathered the skull and different bones from the tree as well as bones of the area that could have been scattered by foxes. Yeah, so uh, forensic scientist Prof. J. M. Webster. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Professor Prof. <laughs> Prof's not a name. Prof. Do you? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Professor. <laughs> Professor J. M. Webster. <laughs> so he was able to shape out and reconstruct uh, the skeleton, and it was confirmed it was a female, and she was aged roughly between twenty-five and forty years old. But this was mainly, he said, like the 35 year old mark that she would be. Right. So the bones showed no sign of violence, no sign of disease, although a larger piece of material was stuffed into her mouth. I wonder if it was a, a bit gag. Fishy. Yeah, it's like it, sort of as gag. if it'd stop her from screaming. But they believe she died of possible asphyxiation as a cause of death. Yeah, she basically choked to death. Yeah. One was described to be about five feet tall. She had light brown hair due to clumps that were found within the tree. She was wearing a striped blue and mustard cardigan and a mustard coloured skirt. So, thinking skirts, I don't know when they were mm -hmm. exactly invented, but I'm pretty sure they weren't really around before the 20th century. So this must have no. been a recent killing. Well, yeah, I mean, it was also stating that she was five feet tall, so it was like standard woman height mm. around that sort of time. They found a pair of shoes as well, but one of them was found inside the tree and the other on the outside, size five. Mm -hmm. As well as a cheap gold wedding ring. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, she's married, obviously, so they can rule that out as well. And um, it 
it's like, um, it's quite, you know, really clever how they've found all these bits and pieces that are actually hers. And it's quite clever how the clove, clothing doesn't decay. It kind of just stays there. Mm. So uh, they were allowed to, like, put the description out. I guess with it being confined sort of on an inner environment, mm. then the clothing would have lasted much longer than it would have, say, if it was left outside somewhere. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have rotted as quickly because it's kind of being preserved by the wood. Yeah. So it was believed that she had been dead for 18 months, which is crazy. And suicide was ruled out because of the shape of the tree. So it was like impossible for her to commit suicide. Mm. Like there was no, nothing for her to like hang a rope over or there was nothing for her to... Because she would have just like jumped and got stuck and then... Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It, it definitely it's ruled just, suicide it, out. Yeah, they've proper ruled it out because she wouldn't have been able to do it in the first place. <clears throat> so, uh, police uh, tried to do a search through the records of missing women, but nothing came of it, unfortunately. And um, around this time, a lot of calls came in from the area about this woman, but still nothing. Like, no, nothing matched the description of the remains that they found and nothing matched anything to do with the lady that they'd found. I guess this was being at the time of World War Two. they had bigger things to worry about. Well... With bombing raids. Yeah, exactly, because... And rationing. I mean, that that's one of the theories that we'll get into later. Like, they actually thought that she was a victim of a bombing raid and she just hid in the tree. Mm. And people would go missing or, like, they'd... Be pronounced missing because of these raids because no they don't know where they've gone or if they just died during a bomb raid yeah they could so, have been blown to bits yeah, and nobody would and have no, found no the one would have known because yeah. it's just one of them things that was around at that the time the remains could have been eaten by animals before yeah. they were found things like that yeah a jury ruled out that she was murdered by a person or persons unknown mm -hmm. on may the 4th a few weeks after the boy's discovery a report was published in a local newspaper basically scouting for dentists in the local area mm -hmm. who may have worked on women of this description. This was because the police found some features that stood out in this woman's mouth, basically her teeth, um, a few of them had been pulled out and were twisted, yeah. so dentists may have recognised this but still no leads came of this. Yeah, so a few, was, um, a few of the teeth were pulled out recently by dentists. So that's why they were a bit like, ooh, maybe she got the work done in this area. Maybe they would have done it in the 18 months before she was alive kind of thing. So they were just looking at that. But um, in March 1944, uh, an empty building in Birmingham was graffiti graffitied in chalk. And this is where it gets very like Sinister. weird. Yeah. and sinister and it's like oh right okay and this is where this is she, she gets actually. the name Bella yeah. from so it read uh, who put Bella down the witch o elm Hagley wood so that's a bit weird isn't it yeah because who is Bella this sounds like <laughs> a taunt to the yeah well, to everyone especially yeah. the police it's like obviously the killer's like, ha, I, I know who she was and I, I know, yeah, but I know this, you, that and the other. None of you lot know who she was. Yeah, but. Kind of thing. And then. Um, so this is a lead at least to them because yeah. she's got a name, whether it was a real name or not, we don't know. Could have just been a nickname. Yeah, but this was almost a year since the body was found, um, but this time she was actually given the name. Even though it turns out that that wasn't even a name anyway, but we'll get into that. <laughs> and it wasn't children who did this graffiti as it was in a place that was too high for children yeah. to reach. Unless they maybe used a stepladder, but yeah. I don't know. But the police believed it was an adult. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Mm. But another report came into police saying that the house down Hayden Hill Road, who had similarly been graffitied a couple of months ago prior to this one, so it also read who put Lou Bella down the witch owl. So she's got two names. Lou Bella. Lou Bella. 
Oh, right. I've never heard that name. You I've, put I've Lou Bella down the witch home. Bella's witch obviously witch short for that in yeah. this case, if that is her name. It's like, why would someone put this to throw police off unless you were the actual killer? Of the various theories that we've managed to compile, the first one was basically procured by the police who thought that the woman's death was due to the air raids, so the bombings. So the police thought that she had heard the sirens, went to the woods, I mean she could have been near the woods, she might have not been near any shelters if there were any. Mm -hmm. And basically the authorities theorised that she may have been attacked by a gang and stuffed into the witch elm, yeah. or just been blown up by a bomb. Yeah. Her family would have assumed that she died in this manner and the police would not be contacted. Yeah. So the second theory was based on an article in the Birmingham Daily Gazette. Is that how you say it? Yeah. <laughs> in 1950. So this was stating that the woman may have been a human sacrifice. <laughs> Which Why? is just crazy. So it was stated that there were still elements of witchcraft in... Uh, parts of Great Britain at the time and it was believed that the woman was sacrificed to the devil because the religion before Christianity believed that if life is taken out of something good so like if crops are taken out of the ground then it has to be replaced with something else for in order for them to get crops the next day so it's yeah. basically like a take on paganism and no offence because it's not my theory because I personally am uh, that of Clyde. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not, you know. But, um, so it must be replaced with a human sacrifice in order for their crops to, you know, not come fail. up the next year and not, fail, not yeah. fail. So it was believed that it was not just this lady who was sacrificed, it was actually another lady who was sacrificed as well. And she oh. was believed to have been sacrificed later on after this lady so oh, right. not long after I've, i don't know no more information about her because i um, it, i didn't it was something that i didn't look into because i didn't want to make this story too confusing with loads no. of theories but um yeah she was killed not long after this lady i think it was a couple of months after all oh, right or something like that so this could have happened to well, loads of people, really. It could have happened to loads of people. There might be loads of undiscovered skeletons in other witch elms, are there? Mm. I mean, from the picture of the witch elm, I've never seen a tree like that before. Yeah, I, I've not, to be quite honest. And we've been on a lot of walks, different parts of the country, not yeah. specifically been to that part much. So, according to Donald McCormick, a author, there had always been talk of Hadleywood being home to witches and covens and also haunt hauntings. So he would even further say that there was an ancient tradition of trapping a witch's spirit inside a, inside a old witch elm tree. Very hollow inside. Yeah, so yeah. like a very hollow tree, or it doesn't have to be a witch elm tree, but just a very hollow tree, any tree like that. And they would use this as um, like a prison to prevent her from creating any more trouble in the world. So there was indications that before the body was found the witch elm tree was trimmed frequently to strunt, like stunt its growth so it, it would remain five to six feet when witch elm trees are normally very big mm. and very like... It was kept in the ideal state for the perpetrators yeah. so they could reuse it. Yeah, th this was the idea anyway, it wasn't fully confirmed. No, th th this was what but, people fear of. Yeah, th this yeah. is what people thought if they believe this witch theory that we've just been on about. Mm. So another source, and this is very strange, I mean I <coughs> can't really even make sense of this. So in January 1954, Mr George Elwell, who was a railway official and an inventor in his spare time, went for a walk around Hadley Wood. Mm -hmm. He paused at the site of the witch elm tree. He then went home and placed himself in a hypnotic trance with his car using a blinking car headlamp and a mirror. So, whew, whew. so his like indicator. Yeah. It was like his indicator light. Yeah. So it's like pulsating. Mm. And yeah. Like so it, putting it's him into a, a trance. Mm. So he recorded the results after a, whatever the results may have been sent a transcript to the police stating the name of the killer and the description. 
nothing came of this if the police thought it was strange. Mm -hmm. It is strange, so I don't really blame him for not pursuing that. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> opening his transcript? His You'd letter, just think you were mad, wouldn't and just you? be like, nah, and yeah. chuck it over. Because <laughs> I don't, well, especially back then, no one would believe it, but no. uh, in this day and age, it's kind of um, like a leeway. Mm. different things into I think it. this last theory which you're going to describe I is the most yeah. interesting of them of yeah the, however many there is so but I do like the witch theory that's mm. uh, cool but this this one kind of makes more sense to me yeah but obviously that was very supernatural and nobody knows if witches were real back then even though people do um practice paganism and Wicca uh, in this day and age like I do so it's no disrespect f for anybody who does that because I'm in the same boat just saying that's all I'm saying I <laughs> don't want to get in a, a, a religion fight <laughs> <laughs> so the last theory could be that the victim could be a Nazi spy so um, in World War Two uh, several German spies were captured in the UK as a result, in 1953, the case of Bella and the Witch Elm attracted a new line of inquiry, war... Like war, espionage, yeah. research, basically. Yeah. So basically research. There were spies all over, weren't they? Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So the Wolverhampton Express and Star received a letter from someone who identified herself as Anna of... Claver, Cla Cla Claravy? Claverly. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm really never, crap at pronouncing things. I've never heard of that place. <laughs> Me neither. But she claimed to have information on the identity of Bella, which was really spiking interest in police. And she was interviewed by a journalist, and she claimed she was a member of a spy ring, uh, seeking information about the local. Uh, sorry, the location of local um, ammunition. ammunition factories that could be targeted by the Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe. <laughs> A lot of complicated words in my bit to say. That's <laughs> where you leave them all for me. <laughs> it's basically the German Air Force, I believe. Yeah, I might so, be wrong, but it was definitely German. Yeah. Luftwaffe. Yeah. But basically, it the theory is that she was a German spy and. Um, you know, that was that. <laughs> so Anna was later identified as Una Mossop, mm -hmm. and she alleged that her RAF pilot husband, Jack Mossop, had witnessed Bella's death. She said that Mossop told her that he had become involved in aspiring along with a Dutchman called Van Rout. Mm -hmm. So one evening, Van Rout, accompanied by a woman Mossop believed to be Bella, had picked up Mossop in his car, and shortly after, Ralt strangled the woman, allegedly because of spy associations. Yeah. So, mm. that's... It's a really big story to make up. Yeah. Isn't it? Like... It makes more, it, like, it makes, sense than the previous. Yeah. I mean, so, the spy world's very sketchy and cloak yeah. and dagger, isn't it? I mean, it just makes more sense than, oh, Bella was a witch, or... Yeah, a man goes into a so-called trance and, yeah, and can name the killer. That, yeah. that just boils down to zero, in my opinion. Yeah, it? It, it does, but um, I don't think it was anything supernatural. Uh, maybe she was. Could have been. But... Yeah, it could have been, because Hagley Wood was and is known for that sort of thing happening, I believe like this that author said. spy theory is by far the most yeah. common. It, it is more um, not likely to have been re, yeah like yeah. more likely to have been that and on that times. Um, theory there's another version of that story isn't there yeah this story claims that Jack Mossop and Van Ralt had been drinking with Bella in the local pub mm -hmm. and she became drunk passed out the two men then placed the woman in the tree to teach her a lesson when she woke up she was unable to climb out and she just died mm. of starvation yeah. or asphyxiation whatever so, however, this theory does not explain the discovery of the taffeta, uh, which was the piece of material that they found in her mouth, which oh, right. ever version was reported to the newspaper had become obscured by time, 
um, what is known as uh, is that Jack Mossop actually died in St George's Hospital in Stafford before Bella's body, Bella's body, was discovered. What's a taffet? A taffet. Taffeta. Taffeta. It's like, I, d I don't know, it's a piece of material anyway. So, allegedly, um, he had recurring nightmares of Bella, Bella's, Bella's skull. Um, stuff inside the tree and it led to him having a mental breakdown scary yeah so van rolt was never found and investigators um considered mossop's testimony to be nothing more than um tittle tattle yeah from yeah a strange wife yeah so basically she was like she might have Blabbing. been jealous yeah, yeah. Just babbling. It's a whole situation, but... It didn't lead anywhere yeah. like any of the other theories, which is why it remains a mystery. Yeah, and today, um, basically, they've sort of figured out what she would look like, and she they've actually, like, constructed a, um image of what her face would have looked like. So we will enter it here, if you want to have a look. But that's the only thing that they've actually ever discovered from this, and... To my knowledge and Liam's knowledge, they haven't uh, discovered anything to do with this story. It's just an unsolved no. mystery. I'd like to go to Hadley Wood now, though, and check it out. Yeah, I would. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed our uh, Christmas special. If you would like and subscribe to our channel. And so we'll see you later. Bye. See you later.